Okay, so this is the Jesse Cox video that's getting a lot of um there's a lot of hype and chatter around it for Final Fantasy 14 versus WoW essentially, but he has played WoW for 15 years and he's been back on 14 for a year, so he's doing like this comparison, so let's watch it together. Over the last few weeks, I've started to notice a lot of familiar faces from the World of Warcraft community taking another look at Final Fantasy 14. So today, I want to talk about the differences between these two games that while sharing many similar concepts, diverge in their execution of the MMO genre. As a fan of both games and 15 year veteran of WoW, I've often thought about this 15 subject years is as such I now play through Final Fantasy XIV on a near daily basis since August of last year. I frequently get asked to compare the two, and the simplest way I've been able to do so is the following. World of Warcraft is an MMORPG, mm -hmm. while Final Fantasy XIV is an, is an RPG, RPG MMO. MMO. Yep. What does this mean besides hopefully sounding clever? <laughs> in Final Fantasy XIV, the entire creative process, the direction, the story. the concepts, all of I it, are approached from an intrinsically different design philosophy than that of Warcraft. 15 years is so practically half of my life, oh my it god, It means they're made for two very different gamers. Let me explain. I think most people have an understanding of what an MMORPG is beyond yep. any sort of definition. There yeah, we're watching the Jess Cox videos together. There are what that experience will be. Which is why after playing Final Fantasy XIV, I've come to call it an RPG MMO. Mm -hmm. Because while all the multiplayer elements are there, I believe they aren't entirely necessary. Yeah. If the MMO were removed and all we were left with was the RPG, the story, the music, the gameplay, it feels like the player would still have a complete experience. 100%. Because the team behind Final them. Fantasy XIV, from its inception, has put its focus squarely on storytelling. This design choice then influences every other aspect of the game. <laughs> Look at that VV glam. That's amazing. Animation all <laughs> serve to enhance the storytelling. It is without a doubt the single most vital aspect of Final Fantasy XIV. Right. Everything comes from the story. Everything is related to the story. And everything exists to service the story. Mm -hmm. So as we move forward in this video, you'll see every time I bring up a comparison or idea in Final Fantasy XIV, it's going to be in some way related to the story. It's, it's all pretty much related to the story. Final Fantasy and WoW can still feel similar to a player moving between the two, but also be vastly different experiences. Let me just throw this out there. What was the story of Vanilla World of Warcraft? There was none. If you had to think, it's because there was no story. There was no there story. Quests, there was lore, certainly different adventures to get involved in. But I've no wrapped Phoebe and Phoenix, story. I don't know. There was no driving force behind what you were doing. Besides the desire to gain levels, abilities, I see what's around me. the next bend, or explore the next zone. The story of the World of Warcraft. I tried to play World of Warcraft and I was so lost because there was made. no story. I was like, it what? It was trying to find the right Zevras in the Barrens. It was sneaking into the undeveloped Mount it, Hyjal. It, it did it's confuse me a little because I was expecting like Those a fierce story and it was like, remember? you were just thrown in, in fact, kind of the thing. The most recent example of a great WoW memory I have is getting the Alliance Horde Slayer title and that achievement in BFA. The whole point is that you kill enough enemy players to literally be marked on the map as a bounty, and then people try to come kill you, and if you survive long enough, you get an achievement. It was wow. one of the most exhilarating recent memories I have in the game. I loved every moment of it. In Final Fantasy XIV, if you ask someone their favorite moment... Oh my god, I love I this did, scene. Almost every single person is going to say theirs is related to story. Obviously, this is <laughs> player, as many players <laughs> find the same camaraderie and accomplishment as WoW players when taking down harder bosses. But... For the majority of players, the story is not just an important part of the game. <laughs> it's also like? something that binds the community together. With that said, after years of playing WoW, to say there isn't a fan base for the world or story building they're doing would be foolish, as I am one of them. But let's be real. The majority of players simply do not care about the plot of Warcraft. Is that Sylvanas? She looks That's because looks cool, it was man. never really the driving force of the game that got them playing in the first place. And more importantly, sticking with it. The fact is, as Blizzard moves more towards storytelling in their more recent expansions, they've developed Into multiple ways of you find yourself uh, concentrating on quests just for something to do. After 14 giving me quests to do, all I know is <laughs> that's that all you know. The <laughs> oh, that's funny. Context to keep a player engaged, but has also formed a complicated so looks like a badass. Yeah, for sure. Enjoy story and world building in Warcraft. Team leads and devs change. Shifting the vision for each expansion to fit what is essentially oh, those the big lions school. on his shoulder. Final main cool. story beats are planned ahead. It's very clear that things have changed or will change based on necessity. Main characters vanish, story elements are left behind, and lore is retconned to fit with the moment. As a big old lore nerd, years of that have definitely left me kind of jaded when it comes to WoW. A mm. silly example is years ago at BlizzCon, I asked the devs about that weird snake tail and gun drack. I was like, what is that thing? 
Their response then, and ever they don't since, know. it's pretty much been, we really don't know. Ah. Perhaps it was snuck <laughs> in, perhaps it was dropped content. Why was going for giant All I can shoulder say is, pads? If it was in Final Fantasy XIV, that snake tail would not only have had a purpose, but it would have shown up two expansions later as an important <laughs> character in an ongoing story. <laughs> Hell yeah. Yeah, yep, would have. one of those videos that's long enough to be split into multiple parts. Yeah, it's this true. is a long video, it guys. It's like 40 minutes. A little deeper. When it comes to content, both games feature the staples of the <laughs> MMORPG genre to differing degrees. Leveling, dungeons, raids, PvP, special events, grinds, and daily mm -hmm. quests. In fact, some on the two dev teams are friends, and they definitely borrow ideas from each other all the time. Yep. Yoshi P, the director of Final Fantasy XIV, is notably a huge Blizzard He's fan. He's so cool in that the glamour. The of course comes from what the dev teams have decided the focus of their game should be. The best way I can simplify this is to say that Warcraft is more about the destination, <laughs> and Final Fantasy XIV is more about the journey. Yes, As an example, 100%. Wow, the leveling process and the expansion is a buffer between you and max level where the real game starts. I was once told by a friend that he always thought of it as advertisements for places that later on at max level you'll spend time grinding. Once right. you've leveled up, you can begin doing harder dungeons, farming gear in Mythic Plus, running raids, this joining cool. PvP battlegrounds or arenas, and doing your daily quests or grinding rep. And for years, this has not only been a pretty Savannah standard Savannah's look like a badass, but Yoshi P is a badass. Yes, Omni. The goal, of course, is keeping players engaged and logged in. Love it. And going back to our Hi, original Dan. story discussion, doing team be looking different. Lol. continues the Warcraft story as well. <laughs> In Final Fantasy XIV, it's a bit different. Mira! With the story being the most important part, this means leveling isn't just a rush to max level to experience the cool parts. The cool parts are Thanks the, for the level. raid, Mira. At max level, there are certainly raids and dailies thank you, thank and grinds you. and PvP. Welcome in, guys. But they're, they're We're just taking some comfy time to watch leveling the Jesse Cox video comparing WoW with XIV. Sure, and while you can level up How's alts, it going? experience the other factions of the story, and a lot of people enjoy that. PvP is a mess, 14, don't at me, lol. Welcome in, friends. The, the, you know, they're varying in size and scope, but like the Dark Knight, for example. Oh, the Dark Knight story is amazing. For being some of the best storytelling in the game. But again, story is what it's about. Most large scale raids only have one difficulty. Ah, level, Thunder God said. More events than actual team building. You still trials. not get notifications, Those Johnny? Those trials that uh. do have harder modes are canonically fan fiction versions of the events. So Is it going, Johnny? Hope you're well. Story, won't miss anything if they don't have time. Oh, you're playing Hades? Content. Nice. PvP, while Vibrant, I mean to play Hades. Is nothing close to that. And wow, reputations and dailies exist, but not in a way that forces the player to spend a significant amount of time investing in them. You miss great. But Good. you're rewarded in a way that makes it feel like you're kind of getting one over on the devs <laughs> for the amount of time you actually put into it. Let me give you some specific examples. Was it stream at some point? Rides. Admittedly, Wait, in WoW, of I haven't Hades? played much beyond the start of max level content in Shadowlands, and this may be I think we're talking about two but different Hades, Johnny. If we look at most <laughs> reputation grinds, it's usually something along the lines of like, you earn 750 rep a day with a weekly bonus of some sort, and you need 40 to 50k rep to reach Exalted. So you're looking at, I don't know, over a month of rep farming to reach max <laughs> Johnny. reputation. Johnny. This, of course, is part of the design yeah, philosophy the game. again to keep you engaged in the Mira's world playing the game. In Final Fantasy XIV, while some of the older reputations are, are pretty similar, the newer ones, take Pixies, for example, are designed not only to be fast, nice to do but some to feel as well. very rewarding. That's true. Every day you get three quests that take roughly 15 minutes to complete. Oh, the beast tribes are so reward, fast. You get tons of Massive XP. Tokens that you can eventually buy rep items with, and then loads of experience. I'm talking like a quarter of is your Is this XP your first thing completing Hades, quests. Mira? And this is great because not only does it make grinding rep easy, but it also rewards you for doing it on one of your other jobs. Yeah, it does. Incentivizing you to level additional Oh, that's classes. sweet XP. Let's take another example. Unlocking flight. In WoW, unlocking flight well, I've heard has a pain always in the arse. been a process. A thing that you really had to earn. Currently, I think to unlock flight, it's something like oh, new save, getting nice. renowned 44 and completing the last yeah, sigil and having as well. completed chapter 12 of the Covenant campaign, receiving memories to unlock account-wide flying. Why is this so complicated? In Final Fantasy 14, while exploring the map that you're already exploring anyway, you use a compass to find little green wind orbies. And when you find them all and you complete the area You're story rusty. Arc, you unlock I feel like that when I'm going to Darkest stuff. Dungeon. I feel it's rusty every time I put a new save But it's easy enough to get just by going through the leveling process. From a design standpoint, I love this. This is when so I easy. When I first learned this is how you got flying in Final Fantasy XIV, I was actually angry about all the time WoW made me waste. In Final <laughs> Fantasy XIV, you get to experience the zone, which is what WoW's trying to get you to do. But 14 doesn't gate your ability to move through it quicker in the future 
behind some sort of grind. Which has probably got a few of you now thinking, Jesse, you're making it seem like you don't have to work for much of Final Fantasy XIV. But of course you do. There are things like fancy relic weapon grinds and stuff like that. But not nearly to the degree that WoW makes you You saw this bit where you were just like, why though? I know. I think we're so used to Blizzard making us go through content multiple times for months in order to unlock something like flying that anything less seems ridiculously easy. But that shouldn't be the case, gang. I don't know anyone who enjoys it, but we still do it. It all just comes down to the fact that the Final Fantasy XIV devs are not trying to keep you in their world for countless hours. So oh, yeah. it seems like everything is a little easier. The fact is the 14 devs have literally said they don't care if you log in every day. Mm -hmm. Get what you want from their game, come back when you want more. Yep. Instead, the grindy bits of Final Fantasy 14 are something Those entirely flying different. Unlocks are awful. I recently oh, saw God. this ad for Final Fantasy 14 and it made me laugh because I've never seen anything like this for WoW, but most Final Fantasy 14 players will tell you this is where the majority of your max level adventure lies. Yeah, Look pretty much. Thing. Gathering, crafting, yep. mm -hmm. free companies or guilds, housing, oh, fashion, yeah. yep. the gold saucer, which is like a permanent version of the Dark Moon Fair. And mm -hmm. I'll be honest, yeah, this is this is pretty much end game. Yeah, content. this is end game stuff that most players play. Have challenging content for those looking for more traditional MMO raiding experience. But like the point I'm trying to make is that in WoW, the end game focus is on harder and harder raiding and mythics pvp both arena battleground and world the thing With of you're making this seem like 14 is easy and i'm like yeah so. because 14, 14 will let you have a life fix in your computer chair you have true very Although true there are savage and ultimate difficulty raids designed for those who want a more challenging experience there's also things like building a cool guild house or crafting a special weapon mm -hmm. from a weird boss drop or going on treasure hunts oh there's yeah we love treasure hunts just raiding for the sake of raiding Speaking of crafting, one of the biggest issues I have with WoW is that crafting for so long has seemed totally pointless once Why? the raid was created. Any gear you could craft, say as a leather worker, was useless for those who could just get raid gear easily. What? Meanwhile, in Final Fantasy XIV, gathering and crafting is very much a major part of the endgame experience. It's huge. If you're curious about other things, PvP, for example. Raiders I mean, wouldn't be case, where they were without wow, gra uh, crafters and gatherers. One. There Seriously? is PvP in Final Fantasy XIV in the form of war games, and there are many people who enjoy it. It's just that there's a wider variety and larger community in WoW. It is, after all, part of the core concept, faction warfare. This doesn't exist in 14. Nah, there we don't no have that. boring player factions. In fact, much of the story is about getting all the nations of the world on the same team. Yeah, the get them all together is, and work together. As yeah. WoW attempts to add more story, the PvP they're doing makes less and less sense narratively. Well, and that's, I mean, just the tip of the iceberg of the endgame experience. <laughs> There's a lot more to talk about, but since we are talking endgame, I think we should flip it and do the starting experience. Okay. Going back to the design philosophies of the two games, we can see differences in the premise of each and how it affects your intro into the game. In World of Warcraft, you start your experience as just one of the many faces in service of your chosen faction. Over time, your actions and defeating various threats increase your importance to the world. In Final Fantasy XIV, you are literally the warrior of light. Hell the yeah, we are. Warrior of light, baby. One. There is no denying your importance to the story. The entire narrative revolves around you. Even though initially you're not recognized as such, I mean, that's what you are. Quickly proving yourself to the world. From that point well, on, every it's because character it means, you know, not only acknowledges you, any but they recognize the importance yeah. of your role over there. It is important to mix so, it up. Add that I'm doing really bad right now at mixing up. Moment. Playing a lot of 14 right now. And you'll see how this might be a daunting task for some new players. Much of the 14 starting experience is, it's pretty slow. Yeah, the 14 is, building, is 1 to 50 is very slow. Lasting roughly the first 50 levels. Correct. I, actually think I agree with the Jesse there. Final Fantasy 14 first 50 has. levels. As it's a hard sell to explain how phenomenal this game becomes mm -hmm. only after you put in 40 hours. Correct. Yeah, 100%. That's exactly what I was told and what I have told others. If you can because stick it out, true, you'll be rewarded a, a million times. Like, hurts the it's so good. Especially for new players who may have friends playing or seen an amazing am i starting to feel the burnout of boredom but they can't nah, play themselves honestly not playing through a hundred no. hours of i've got so much content that i'm never bored themselves completely disconnected from the plot and that is a real shame because the game uses even for someone who's been playing for six years set up to build out the that's because the i don't play so for skip over the starting experience, 10 hours a day the amount of stuff you miss is i try and limit it mind-boggling and because the story is so well told, Who cares all of it, the right? yeah, no. and locations and factions, etc., are so perfectly fit into the puzzle that is the main plot. That's the same for most Fantasy games, though. They, they take a while to get sense. going. Yeah. When reveals are made, 
It's like oh, there's a bit yeah, of lore building in it, all story building, character building, all that stuff, and it it makes a difference to how it trans as I've said, like I've it unfolds. Both ends of this. Years ago, when the game first came out, I gave it a shot, and around level years. forty, was totally burnt out. It wasn't until I returned last see year. This? See this? See this part where he says I tried to play it, got to level forty, and experienced burnout. The vast majority of players feel this, but see, unless you have either. You know that there's a lot of stuff going on after after 50, right? Or you've got people to help remind you and push you through. Lots of people give up at this point. This this is like one of the biggest weaknesses in 14. For something new, then I gave the game a second chance on the recommendation of a friend. I'm glad he gave it a second I'm chance. I'm so glad I listened because for a fan of a story like me, what this game offers is a fantastic experience. Sadly, the reason behind Final Fantasy XIV, A Realm Reborn Slow Start... You've been playing for eight years, have you? No, I've been playing since 2015. ...of the disaster that was the original Final Fantasy XIV. The budget was small, uh, the, end of the timetable Reborn. was short, and it shows. It isn't until the later patches of A Realm Reborn and the release of the first expansion, Heaven's Ward, that the game truly shines. Mm -hmm. The production value skyrockets, the writing is less long-winded, yep. the voice actors change. Just about everything is better than where it started. And universally, everyone acknowledges this fact, which is why I assume the free trial. Yeah, they definitely have been working to stream it. You're right. If you're going to keep playing the game, it's the first expansion that's going to get you. What's totally insane about all of that is only by sticking with it can you then truly appreciate the slow burn yes. a Realm Reborn was and all the ideas it introduces that later become very important. Yes. It's like when your parents gave you some advice as a kid. And you didn't listen, and now you're 30, <laughs> yeah. and you're like, damn, that was good advice. I should have listened. <laughs> but again, how do you sell that to people? Meanwhile, the WoW starting experience is much more welcoming to new players because they keep updating it and changing it, a thing Final Fantasy XIV can't do without damaging the plot it's trying to set up because Warcraft doesn't concern itself with this. They now offer multiple ways to level, a special starting zone designed to teach new players, they have streamlined the process of getting your character to the end game, which, as we discussed, is a core design philosophy. But this means, depending on when you started playing, your story experience in World of Warcraft could be entirely different from another player. Some moments I may have experienced years ago are no longer in the game, making it so things that bind players and keep them engaged in the game are not story, but it's progression systems, guild dynamics, and faction conflict, which okay. I think. I remember when I spawned into, into this classic. zone the very first as time, I was way underleveled, but and I instantly died. Also a shared sense of existing <laughs> the same world, instantly died which I feel like at the dark I think portal. You would say the current iteration of WoW does not have. Another way to look at this is how new content is delivered. If we so look at the busy. two most recent completed content cycles in both WoW and 14, the picture we get of everything I've been talking about becomes more clear. In WoW, the new content starts with the release of a trailer, a big budget, stunningly well-made, sometimes shocking reveal. It's usually a way for Blizzard to show the first major inciting story moment. This is something like Sylvanas breaking the Helm of Domination or Deathwing destroying the world. Then okay. before launch, there's a book and maybe some a short book. stories about major characters involved in the next expansion. We'll get a pre-patch event and then the expansion will release. And for the most part, every WoW expansion follows a similar formula. We get a short burst of main story, before pausing for leveling content and eventually returning to the main plot. Then a major raid is released, and the story for the main plot continues as we get a series of patches culminating in the last patch of the expansion and the showdown with the big bad. Okay. The cycle begins again with a new trailer. Because of its heavily story-based nature, almost all of the content in 14 is delivered in-game. Oh, so yeah. in the previous expansion's fourth major patch, you'll get hints of a new story. By the time the fifth major patch rolls around, you'll have more information, uh, important details, or new jobs will be hinted at. And then, you know, around the same time, we get the trailer. Unlike WoW, it's not a single moment, but a series of vignettes and a hint of things to come in the next expansion. Then at launch, the main story is experienced and completed mm -hmm. throughout the leveling process. The first major patch and so on are there to wrap up loose ends, yep. tell new smaller stories either via raid or a series of max level trials, or introduce new areas that serve as a way to grind out special weapon skins. And then, by the end of the third major patch, the story of the expansion is wrapped up, and then the fourth patch continues the trend of hinting at what will be in the new expansion. So once again, I'm sure the obvious difference comes down to the initial design choice by the two dev teams. I forget the coming out of the gates at Lumps for the first time. Is is, is to keep yeah, it's a fate longer. we have to kill sheep. So if Those you're a fan of story, for example, you need to keep with it through all the patches to see the end. 
While Final Fantasy XIV, designed to deliver story most of all, They're all gives you a completed theory. one at launch. I have so many that adds additional in adventures out. I don't need this. I don't need as many ults as I have, but the most notable difference in uh, gameplay I have between many, the two, many. I think, is to start the global cooldown in Final Fantasy XIV is 2.5 seconds. Yep. So when you're level 10, for example, and you only have three abilities, it seems like there's a lot of downtime. Yeah. Later on, as you unlock other off cooldown skills or increase your stats to lower your GCD. This changes, but for the start, it definitely feels pretty slow. It this sure also does. translates into differences between the spell and ability rotations of the two games. Warcraft is more reactionary. Build up a bar or wait for a crit to trigger an ability, while Final Fantasy XIV is more proactive, where the player weaves a pattern of combos together to create a string of pre-planned attacks. Even the procs in Final Fantasy XIV mm, yeah, are associated are. with patterns and planning. Combat Very much WoW a dance is with like 14. a street brawl. And Final Fantasy XIV is like a dance. Oh, hey. That's and because what I just XIV said. is more of a dance, the combat is more spectacular. And the spell effects are way more flashy than those in WoW. <laughs> yeah, they are. For the are. most part, spell effects aren't necessarily designed with large groups in mind, unlike Warcraft. So when you're in a 24 man raid and all the effects Burn are. Turn those effects off, off. It can sometimes feel blinding. So much so that there are options in 14 to decrease or turn them off for other players. Yes. Speaking of making always changes turn them off. To the game, 14 has a pretty amazing oh, HUD customization in the base game. While you can do a lot more with the various add-ons in WoW, 14 gives you enough tools to customize your experience so that you don't feel the absence of add-on support. This UI customization allows for the use of a controller, which the game was designed with in mind, mm -hmm. allowing for cross-platform play between PC and PlayStation. This allows for some pretty fun player interface options and looks, letting you clutter your screen with as much information or as little as you want. And we can't forget about the accessibility of players who simply can't use a mouse and keyboard. Accessibility can be found in 14 in the form of universal language on markers and effects. I'm yep. sure that as you've watched this video, you've noticed in the Final Fantasy 14 segments, the same markers on the ground over and over and over again. To yep. the point where players can have some idea of what's coming their way based on the effect. This they is why you shouldn't what's skip about to happen and what's story required. or skip Another leveling. Another gameplay difference, which is probably what we should have started Specifically with, Specifically leveling because it teaches you those mechanics. To play every job or class in the game and switch between them. If you choose Black Mage to start, for example, like I did, and you end up hating it, like I did, yeah, then you can switch to another job and try something <laughs> new. Fall in love with something new, like a Red Mage, or a Warrior, or a Dragoon, like I did. And 14 is designed with this one character leveling multiple things in mind. Yes. WoW, on the other hand, is designed around having to create multiple alts to try different classes. But unlike 14, each of these new characters has some sort of racial ability, or special action and, and 14 doesn't have that no it doesn't mean you can't level alts in 14 but it's unnecessary to experience all the game has to offer warcraft does however have more overall combat diversity with the option okay. to choose talents and spec out your character in fun weird ways although a lot of the time people just look up what the best is uh. also the classes in wow seem more wild and vibrant compared to that of final fantasy 14. There are no Demon Hunter or oh, Brewmaster analog, for example. It does have a blue mage, but it's treated as more of a joke class with wacky overpowered abilities that isn't really allowed in current content. That's true. Also, WoW really nails raiding and PvP. It's what the game was designed for, and they do it very well. Yeah, but Black Mage is WoW favorite, so it'll never change. The PvP's it'll more never get complex, better. But Final Fantasy XIV does something very fun with its dungeons, raids, and trials by including synced, unsynced, and minimum item level settings. Yeah. You can change the difficulty of a dungeon, for example, to be exactly how it was when you first ran it in your low level gear, or to cheese the hell out of it at max level. The mm. last thing of note is that when crafting or gathering, 14 is much more visual and complex than WoW. It's not just clicking a node. They're actually separate jobs, separate skills, separate stories, and separate gear that you can play without ever doing the main story. Although you'd, you'd need it to unlock some zones, there are whole events built around <laughs> using these crafting and gathering jobs. Building a city, for example. And as I mentioned before, building uh, the firmament was a lot of fun. Wow, whose crafters are mostly useless once people can do looking for raid. That hurts my soul that crafters and WoW are useless. You're going to get tired of hearing me say it. You probably already are, but story plays a major role in the aesthetics of 14 versus WoW as well. Both games look very good. Let me be clear. But they each have their own visual style. WoW is slightly more cartoony and exaggerated. Mm -hmm. Everyone has giant muscles, even the fat dudes and the gnomes. <laughs> 14 is a bit more subdued in all regards. Even the, the 14 colors is absolutely are more gorgeous. Down. Some might call the character Hashtag designs bias. a bit animu. 
Meanwhile, the WoW character designs are more diverse than 14 as well. Trolls, undead, humans, pandas. In 14, it's more like human, tiny human, <laughs> cat human, horny human. <laughs> the biggest difference I've noticed comes down to 14's emotive characters and WoW's wider array of visually diverse zones. These emotive characters make it so 14 can easily work in numerous in-game cutscenes and match the voices. One in the order to do the same thing in WoW, custom-crafted scenes are made, which take time and limit the number that can be included. That's not to say that Warcraft characters can't show emotion, or Final Fantasy doesn't have visually diverse zones, but each does their thing better. WoW can get more wild with their visual design because they aren't Never limited get by how players people think 14 looks like anime. Consoles. I don't either. The PS3 version of 14 was still available until 2017, which means the PS4 version will be limiting players for a few years still. Because its limits are fewer and the devs can update and change their graphics more frequently, WoW can create a more wild, outlandish, and visually striking environment for players to explore. I and don't believe that. I feel like telling in mind, characters' faces like are designed to show a wider environment is pretty, of pretty WoW, on the varied. other hand, added story after the fact, so the mm. game wasn't designed to have a lot of close-up facial animations. So <laughs> as they add no. new in-game cinematics, many of the ones we're getting now seem to have these weird flappy jaw yapping things going on <laughs> and that stands out from the other higher quality cinematic stuff we're used to getting in wow yeah i don't know if i like the aesthetic of wow the i think that's just me off. also another thing worth pointing out as that and the lack again, of customization. Is a perfect example of my original thesis like the graphic design of the games they both have good music but similar to wow's visual style final fantasy 14's musical style is far more diverse and wild and fun yes. in warcraft music is mostly ambient used to set the mood or the zone, the we don't want ambience we want lahi repeating and not all that <laughs> intrusive but many times because of its generalized nature there are moments where it might not fit the events that are on screen in an epic boss fight for example there's plenty of times i remember struggling Imagine through a raid 14 didn't have to get to, to the final boss and limits, the music I know. was pretty much the same be, as when i started I think the raid. Be meanwhile in 14 because the music like everything else is connected to the story it's more moment to moment than well Again, you know, it's not like WoW I doesn't do story lucky. moment music, or <laughs> Final Fantasy XIV doesn't have ambient zone themes, but they both do their own thing way more. Final Fantasy XIV has musical themes for sad moments and happy moments mm -hmm. and silly moments and tense moments. It sometimes even tells a story. Yeah. There are theme songs and light motifs and, more importantly, battle music. Ah, the battle music's so good. <laughs> this song's so good. Come on, show us some other good battle music. There's so many good ones. the best one we fall we fall we fall oh this song is so good i get goosebumps every time i hear it it's just so good it's winning wiping or running a fight more tolerable hi stagger song in the background Truthfully, Final Fantasy XIV just has a larger variety of music and uses it better than WoW. Yeah, they do. Which is crazy, because I remember listening to the soundtrack for WoW Legion and thinking how great it was, only to find out there were some songs not even used in the game. Or if they were, I don't remember or missed it. Wow. I recall multiple versions of Anduin's theme, only for him to barely be involved in the main Legion storyline. Really? And his theme to show up like, Maybe once or twice. Wow. That's so crazy to know they have all this amazing talent at Blizzard making music, and they don't even use it all. Why and not? Remember Elite Tour and Chieftain? Final Fantasy XIV has a band of devs called <laughs> the Primals. Except they don't just do meme songs; they play like all the hits from the game. Yeah, they do. Lyrics and all. And let me tell you, they got some bangers. The difference is they got some bangers. Was phased out of live events. The Primals are the highlight that everyone looks forward to. Yeah, we do. It's as if the WoW community thought ETC was kind of lame. And Final Fantasy XIV fans are like, more primals, please. More primals, please. <laughs>
So there's one last thing to talk about. Yeah, 14 could work with other music. Controversial at all. The communities. I've been oh, in the wild community here we go. to have formed a pretty substantial theory about it. I know I'm going to get lots of crap for this one, but I think the general notion is that it's it's pretty toxic. Uh -huh. Yes, your personal guild might be awesome, but generally, I think we can all agree there are high levels of toxicity in the wild community. And I believe yes. this stems from the nature of the game itself. WoW agree, is actually. based in conflict. A game where two factions are pitted against each other from the beginning, so players already have an established enemy or other yep. to focus their ire on. I said this before. It is thematically it's the game that in determines the community, the community. And not only is player versus player part of the game, mm -hmm. but so is competition on a PvE level, with world first and server first and more at a macro level, and then tools like DPS meters at a micro level to determine who is the best in the current party. Everyone is judging everyone at all times in Warcraft. It can feel overbearing. Yeah. Even WoW's more cooperative events can seem like competition between players. As players are in the game longer and learn more and think they know more, yeah, we got an entire two-day fan fest if it's only famous players. And soon the forums are littered with waste. You know, toxic. Toxic Fourteen, waste. At least in my experience has been different. And it's hard to explain because, sure, there must be toxicity in the community. Yeah, there I've absolutely is. It. I've never seen it. And maybe that's streamer privilege. Maybe it's just I'm very lucky. I don't know. But most people, if you ask, will tell you how nice and wonderful and kind the 14 community is. But it's also jarring. If you're a WoW player coming to the Final Fantasy 14 community, there's a lot to understand that's different. Let yeah. me give you a great example. Rare mobs. Or in the case of 14, ranked mobs. In WoW, if you see a rare monster, you find a way to kill that thing as fast as you can, you grab friends, you grab guildies, you want that special drop. Uh -huh. In Final Fantasy 14, that's frowned upon by most of the community. I found this out one day when I saw a rare and asked my free company, my guild, for help. And they were like, dude, wait for the hunt train. And I was like, what? What the yep. hell are you talking about? It's right here, right now. And they explained, that's not how the community does it. When all the rares are finally spawned, hunt trains form, and like a hundred players yep. move from zone to zone, killing we work them, together each with that credit shit. for the kills and any sort of rewards. This idea baffled me. <laughs> I was like, I am here right now. What if I'm not online later? I have to pass up the kill just cause? And they Pretty were like, much. yeah. <laughs> I know it sounds crazy, but having done multiple hunt trains now, I understand it completely. Yep. And I actually prefer it. It's almost hey. like if WoW this had the is same coming to our way of thinking, guys. I may have actually seen a time lost Proto Drake once or twice. Warcraft eventually had moments like this for Nash Tadar and <laughs> Mechagon, but it's not on the same level. This camaraderie yeah. with the 14 community translates to how they treat new players for the most part as well. 100%, sprouts, yeah. As they are lovingly called, are new players with a little we icon love our next to their name. Normally, one would assume an icon next to your name, letting everyone know that you have no idea what you're doing. <laughs> it seemed like you just got yourself a scarlet letter and became a pariah. But in Final Fantasy XIV, nah. it's the exact opposite. Mm -hmm. Instead of trolling or treating them poorly, most players cheer them on or offer advice and tips and dungeons. Hell yeah, it we makes do. It's easier to understand if someone has no clue what's going on. You can instantly see they're new. You used to go and it's okay. to talk to the about racism from players and the way community still exists. Yeah. Having them in your group. Very much still a and thing. And that's what I think is so special about the community in fourteen. I've seen plenty of players try new classes, more collaborative, or whatever, in, 14. in both WoW and 14. And people can get intimidated about being yelled at for sucking or I think I'll ever forget something. when I messed up but a pool 14, that as a new tank and expected to be kicked. Know immediately but that with nothing but kindness and understanding, so I'm so confused. Oh my that god, that's so cool. Some things. And it made you comfy in 14. Good. Ask, which is honestly the biggest problem in WoW. New players are always afraid to ask what to do. Yeah. Just as an example of how this mentality rubs off on you, I was doing my 14 roulettes or, or dungeon dailies and got the final Omega raid. When it popped, I was in a group of almost all Sprouts. For those of you <laughs> who don't know, this fight is what you would call a, a complicated dance. Yes. <laughs> a lot. And in my guild chat, I was cursing up a storm. I was so upset that I had to go through this thing that I thought was going to take me five minutes, but I'm here at like minute 30. But in party chat with the Sprouts, I was like, we can do this. Come on. I'll teach you how to do this fight. I've often thought about what Sprouts and WoW would be like. And the only thing I can think of okay. is that.
can I just, I just want to clarify something here that he mentioned. So he said that in his guild chat, in his free company chat, he was cursing up a storm, right? But in party chat, he was like very, very encouraging. We can do this, blah, blah, blah. See that? That is the difference between a lot of players. So see when there, there's a lot of people that will like open their mouth at the wrong time. It's thinking before you speak. You can absolutely be angry if you want. You can be frustrated, you can swear, you can curse, you can do all that shit if you want around your friends. But see, when you, the minute you do that to other players that you don't know that are strangers, that's out of order and you shouldn't do it. And I think there's a lot of like learning to go around, especially with WoW players coming over to 14. There's like this huge learning curve of people not getting that that's how the community works. You know what I mean? And it would mostly be people dropping from parties that they showed up in. Again, this vlog, is uh, Rogue streams all the time. Hey, Mahoney, how's it going? Assholes play Ella's all sorts here too, games, hello. But the general How often does SC base? chat fill up with moaning about wiping and yes, Ella did ancient again? Yeah. Someone something wrong while I stream, but that's every game for everyone. The biggest difference I think okay is the Final Fantasy XIV community does not Just tolerate don't moan a lot to of the, the stuff that WoW does. Yeah, the don't moan to the other players that you don't know. The crackdown is swift and immediate. And some of you may be like, well, that doesn't sound cool. I guess for the people who don't want to deal with that stuff, it's pretty cool. I don't know. The last big takeaway I have on community is this. The WoW player base seems always ready to attack their game, even while loving it. Yeah. And the Final Fantasy XIV community is always trying to defend their game, even if it doesn't need it. Yes. That's true. World of Darkness, though. <laughs> Yeah, that ancient flare wave. So mm -hmm. you've made it some 30 minutes into a YouTube video and you find yourself here. This was all Dally just sort of a long a some of the runs of she had that she wouldn't ever sure post in party chat the first five now. minutes. But I really wanted to expand upon this the differences not between do. WoW and 14 and how there are players who like each of these. So I guess that's pretty We're much it for this fault, video. Yeah. Sure, there's definitely going to be something I missed or couldn't find a way to fit in the video. That's what comments are for, I suppose. So please... If you have something to add or additional thoughts or insights, or if you think I'm way off, let me know. This video was done out of love for both games and the knowledge that each has its own audience. Thanks, and it's okay Jesse. to like one and not the other. I hope the Great takeaway video. is that if you enjoy story games as much as I do, you'll check out 14. Fantastic and if you video. you care less, you're probably already invested in WoW, and I don't see why you should leave. That's what it comes down to, at least for me. What anyway, did you guys think? so much. Thank you to all the amazing patrons who make videos like this possible. Yes. Please, if you like this, share it with your friends. Thanks, JC. We like loved it. Well. Uh, I would love it if you would consider subscribing. And hit Go the subscribe bell to Jesse Cox, guys. That, you, know, you have to do on <laughs> YouTube in order to see a video of these.